All right, guys, today we're gonna to be doing a video talking about how American knife makers can win in 2023. Now, what I mean by this is a few things. And no doubt there have been multiple videos from many different YouTube channels here of like calling out the American knife makers, primarily the larger uh, ones such as Buck, Benchmade, and so on and so forth. Primarily companies like Buck and Benchmade, especially those who were at SHOT Show this year, and ultimately calling them out saying that what they're seeing is overpriced and underdeveloped designs. Now, there are many different perspectives to this, and some more fair than others. I think definitely lack of strong workforce is definitely a factor, but I also see, especially when I was watching some of the videos um, by Buck Knives, the people that were demonstrating the knives and showing off the new blades for that year just seemed to be um, very, it looked to me, and maybe I was just reading it wrong, and maybe SHOT Show was just a, a tumultuous time or something, but ultimately it seemed like the people there that were, uh, that were demonstrating and showcasing the knives weren't that passionate and honestly looked pretty darn burnt out. Now, no doubt, um, lack of workforce will definitely do that, but also lack of enthusiasm for the product that you're making is another key killer to enthusiasm. Like, I've seen people who are heavily overworked and not encouraging it by any stretch of the imagination, but people who are heavily overworked and sometimes even underpaid. But if the passion is there, like, Genuinely, if the passion is there, they will still be able to know their product well, rep their product well, and be excited about it overall. And those were things that I really didn't see, to be honest, with companies like Buck um, when they were presenting their new knives. So I think like part of it really comes down to these knife companies either need to get staff in that genuinely appreciate what they do or genuinely are passionate about the products. They need to create better work environments for those people, not to say that, you know, like I'm trying to champion better work environments, um, but ultimately to, you know, uh, things like pay can be very, I guess, ultimately, like if the work staff themselves don't feel like they are adequately paid to meet the needs of their personal life, then you are going to naturally attract people who have lesser work ethic. So that isn't necessarily saying that, you know, knife makers or people who work at these knife companies should increase their wages tenfold, but it's ultimately trying to find people who are motivated to either work for the prices that you are asking or to try to find people or a price point that motivated people will work for. So it is definitely difficult. And I know, especially in America right now, the whole work um, ethic slash, you know, environment is very skewed, especially with all of the, you know, like online monetization. And so, so many people feel like they can just work at home and make a good amount of money. And so they don't even have to show up for a in-person job. So that definitely, uh, definitely hurts the knife industry in America for sure. But uh, yeah, ultimately, aside from passion, because I understand that that can be very hard to control from a global perspective or from that the global unit of that knife company. The other thing for me that I think is really important for the EDC community of American knife makers is really to copy the idea of the Chinese knife makers. And what I mean by this isn't so much to directly rip their designs off because many of their designs are ripoffs of American designs, but they are definitely coming up with their own technology do what these knife companies are doing, these Chinese knife companies. And I realize this is not a Chinese knife, this is a uh, Hinder XM18, but I'm just holding this guy up for a little bit of knife uh, goodness. But anyways, um, so what a lot of these Chinese knife companies are doing, and I think why they're succeeding is once again, the upper management and upper echelon of a lot of these knife companies are very passionate about creating products that consumers want to use, want to carry and want to own. And so that is something that I think is largely missing with American knife companies. Once again, namely Buck, not to pick on them too much, but um, they are certainly one of them. And so that's, that's a bit of a problem. And honestly, it kind of goes one step deeper because so due to that lack of truly wanting to make a knife that people 
want to carry, want to use, something that's new and innovative. They lose touch on the actual community. And so this is where I think Chinese knife makers are absolutely killing us as far as American knife makers go, is that they are listening and collaborating with a lot of smaller American makers. Once again, we've just seen companies like Gavco Knives, you know, work with We and Civivi to make um, multiple different Gavco or Gav yeah, Gavco models come to life. And while this is my Gavco nurse, so it's not necessarily directly applicable to the hyphen, um, ultimately you do see a lot of these Chinese companies really reaching out and honestly creating a streamlined process to where really smart, really good makers like Gavco and honestly many others. Um, Ray Laconico also comes to mind because he's worked a lot with uh, many Chinese knife companies but uh, <clears throat> they really, these Chinese knife manufacturers really create a portal and an easy way for these people who are very talented to come to them, to produce designs with them, to get paid for those designs. And I think that is one of the largest um, things that American knife companies are not doing. And granted, companies like Hinderer here are not necessarily going to be the ones most apt to doing collaborations because they are kind of one of those knife makers themselves or just a little bit larger uh, on the scale. But at the same time too, once again, going back to Buck, going back to Benchmade, going back to Spyderco, you know, realistically, when we saw this year's lineup for SHOT Show, none of, or very few, I should say, of the knives that came out from any of those manufacturers were genuine collaborations with other knives makers and so I think the biggest like systemic issue with that is that when you don't work with the community you lose touch of the community and you lose the the pulse of the community so to speak so when it comes down to it let's just say like the axis lock the patent expired I believe now two years ago but for sure at least one and you know um, Chinese knife manufacturers were already keen on stealing it well before the patent expired but honestly there were a lot of um, good knives like the Kai or drop bear which isn't necessarily my personal favorite probably won't be picking one up myself but a lot of people loved it and there were a lot of really solid axis lock or axis style lock blades that came out i mean even hogue did one themselves and that one was pretty darn good too such as the uh, deca but anyways like i said you genuinely see a lot of these chinese manufacturers really working with smaller time manufacturers so that they keep a pulse on the community and where it's going. This is something that you just aren't seeing out of American manufacturers at this moment, at least. So I think like that's one of the largest things is to you know, ultimately have passionate people working for your company. And I feel like those passionate people, like people who are genuinely passionate about knives, knife design, knife use, um, will chase the makers that are making the most waves, the most notoriety in the community, and therefore land uh, collaborations or designs with them. And in that way, you have new designs that are coming out that feel like they are in touch with the community because that's something that like i said i've heard not just that's not just how i felt but i've heard from multiple other especially knife tubers but uh people in the community as a whole that ultimately felt that you know a lot of these american knife manufacturers they're releasing new knives that are just so out of touch with what is relevant in the community at this moment and that really is unfortunate and i mean like not to pick on buck too much but they were just such a prime example that so many of their new releases were essentially just 110s and 112s just upscaled with better steels better handles um, or just more classy materials i guess you could say and uh, you know maybe some thumb studs on them but realistically like the 110 the 112 are fantastic classic knife designs but they've also been around for decades um, well over 50 years and so there's nothing really innovative that you can do to them even if you change the steels even if you change the handles it's still going to be the same core principle lock back knife and so to see that being like the spearhead of what buck is releasing it's just pretty disappointing um, now there are definitely some american knife manufacturers bucking this trend uh, spartan knives is doing a good job hogue is once again absolutely killing it i'll do another video on hogue like themselves 
themselves. But, you know, there are a few good American manufacturers out there if you, you know, keep your eye out for them. But by and large, the big names are just really losing relevancy because they refuse to work with, once again, American knife makers. And the smaller ni American knife makers are going to China and working with them to create designs of their blades. So anyways, that's kind of how I see uh, the knife community and um, ultimately how... Um, but ultimately, yeah, that's how I see the knife community in America. And ultimately, I definitely want, like, I want American knife manufacturers to win. I really do. And I don't necessarily mean, like, win as in, like, beat out China. You know, Chinese knives have their place and their time in the community and industry as a whole. But, uh, you know, it's just a shame to see such good companies, at least companies that were previously so good, just fall from grace. And uh, really, there's there's no excuse for it. Like, there. There are plenty of makers out there, plenty of designers that make fantastic custom blades that would be more than willing to help companies like Benchmade or lend their hand, their expertise in designing blades. And these people have the pulse on the EDC community. So it's not rocket science. It's pretty darn easy. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.